Hello and welcome to another video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout. My name is Joe and today I'm joined by Mark, aka the FPL General, to reveal his Game Week 11 team. It's Green Arrow so far for our freshly salad and hardenless teams. I don't know why I wrote that to read out because it's really hard to read out. But Mark is concerned about another misfiring striker in his ranks. Welcome, Mark. How are you? I'm very well, Joe. Good to be back for another video. Yeah, mm. good, a good weekend of FPL action. A lot of FPL managers, I think, seem to do well across the board, mm. kind of regardless of teams this week, which hasn't happened no. very often. So yeah, we'll talk. Transfers went well. I've had a couple of red arrows recently, so it's mm. it's good to get a green one on the board. Yeah, we both got green arrows. We both got green arrows last time. Um, you're up to 769k. I'm up to 652k, but there's only a few points between them, so pretty much the same. And uh, we've both got uh, Brian and Bomo and Flecken to go tonight. We are recording this at uh, about half four, um, so two or three hours before the Brentford Fulham uh, game. And as you said, yeah, the game week game week ten was good. Even if you uh, had Harland and captained him, you and but you had Solanke and Chris Wood perhaps as well. You did well. Um, so there was a lot of players that did well, and uh, Palmer and Saka not doing well will benefit those without them as well. Um, okay, uh, before we go on, just a reminder, do press that like button, does help us out. Do leave a five-star review if you're listening to the podcast version. Also, do subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos and podcasts. Um, okay, let's move on to your uh, game week 10. Um, so I've got a picture of Salah next to him. He's pointing to your 44 points um, because 18 of those were from him and captaining him. So do you want to take us through your team? The stars, the the the, uh, the less bright stars, and also um, what what moves you made because um, Salah in will be new. Yeah, so uh, I think we spoke last week that Salah was a priority, and I was kind of dead set on doing that all week. It was just figuring out how to do it because there's a lot of different routes. Could have could have sold Saka, could have sold Palmer, Trent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in the end, Mister Haaland reluctantly left. And then it was just a decision of, is it Morgan Rogers who goes or is it Brennan Johnson? My initial thought was just sell Johnson, free up more money. But then I looked at the fixtures and I fancied Villa at home for Tottenham and more importantly, Ipswich at home in game week 11. Mm -hmm. So glad I held on to Johnson. Both yeah. of them ended up scoring, of course. So two free transfers were used. Uh, Fleck and still to play. Nothing from the defence. Trent, Gabriel, Enrico Lewis. Been very disappointing defensively recently. Uh, midfield five, Johnson with eight. Bumo to play. Sackett and Cole Palmer blanks. And I think Palmer's having a scan. So mm. hopefully nothing major in that. Captain Salah for 18. Cunha, new recruit. He came in to replace Erling Haaland. The assist was a six-pointer. He's mm. always good for bonus. Yeah. And then I've got the misfire in Calvert-Lewin up front. And my only usable substitute at the moment is Mikalenko. So, yeah. yeah, there's a very obvious weak link, I think. Yeah, OK, yeah. So um, with Palmer, so say, for example, because I know a lot of your plans don't don't focus on moving Palmer out. Um, so I was, you know, seeing the yellow flag on him. He's got scans. So if, if, say, he's only out for a week or so, presumably you just bench him. But as you said, you've got quite a weak bench and you've got issues and we'll come to to that in particular with uh, Calvert-Lewin in your team. Um, so what's the plan if Palmer's sort of, you know, definitely ruled out for this weekend, but international break coming up, so chances are I'll be back for game week 12. Yeah, I really hope I don't need a plan for Palmer injury. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably, having not thought about it too much yet, it's, it's still probably prioritise getting a new striker for mm -hmm. Calvert-Lewin and then just... Use Michael Enko, soldier through, you know, one more week before the international break. And like you say, then if there was an issue, hopefully, hopefully back by game 12. Yeah, it's West Ham away from Michael Enko. I mean, I've got the same. I've got Michael Enko on my bench as well. Um, so, you know, if he's needed, I don't mind that. I've also got Morgan Rogers, um, not ideal uh, away to Liverpool, but, you know, he scored away to Spurs. Um, you never know. Um, he's OK. But yeah, there's uh, some other people might have some menu for myself. I'd I got removed Semenyo for Salah. Uh, I would have benched Semenyo anyway. But yeah, there's just definitely... Had a, yeah, sorry. Just had a quick look at the fixtures while you're speaking, just on that Cole Palmer situation. If if he is to miss out, if he if he's definitely going to miss out mm. in game week 11, you know, Manchester United at home to Leicester stands out. Mm. You know, Bruno Fernandes, Garnacho, yeah. these kind of guys will be very, very tempting. So that's certainly one to monitor. Yeah, also Son as well. I know he came off... Uh, uh, didn't join your 59 minute club, but if you had a 55 minute club, not not quite as catchy, um, then he would have joined that. Um, but I think I get the impression that he will last longer the next game. 
However, um, I, can't, I get the impression he's not going to finish the game. So, but yeah, Son would be a, a substitute there. For those like me who don't have Saka, if Palmer's out long term, longer term, I would just get, I would just put Saka in because I would make get Saka in anyway soon. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Son, Son's the obvious one, isn't he? Mm. If um, it's the Ipswich fixture, I've, I've people I haven't done the podcast yet this week, but there's loads of questions. You know, which mm. which three Tottenham players to yeah. own for Ipswich at home? So mm. yeah. Sonny's going to be popular this week. I'm sure people will even captain him. So, Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting the 4-1 against Villa. I am sort of expecting that against Ipswich, though, uh, of which, obviously, Solanke um, doing well. Uh, Johnson doing well. Eight points for both of us there. Um, and those with Son as well. He did get an assist, but he did come off there. Uh, their defence is just a no-go. So I would imagine your response might be, if you can, if you can get him in, Johnson, Son and Solanke. But game week 12, they face City. So yeah, that's ideal. the problem. So you don't want to yeah, you don't want to go too much into them, or unless you've got lots of transfers. I mean, I'm personally looking at benching Johnson in game week twelve. So I, I don't particularly want more Spurs, even though they do have Ipswich. But, yeah, yeah, and I've kind of penciled in as well a, a Johnson sale in game week twelve. Um, yeah. You know, maybe like a Garnacho or something like that, or or back to Semenyo who I had earlier. So yeah, again, do you want to double up yeah. before a Manchester City fixture? Yeah. Probably not. Um, uh, so 44 points, but Flecken and Bomo to go. So should be some more. You're on a green arrow. Quite a healthy one, I think. I think we were both, as l- last week, we were both exactly on 927,118. <laughs> I can remember it. Um, so I, I suspect whatever happens tonight, um, I think even if Jimenez goes off, he's only about 20, 15% owned around my rank. Um, I think both of us should be looking at green arrows. Just depends on the size of the green arrow, I think. Yeah. We're going to be fine because um, Flecken's going to save two Jimenez penalties tonight. Oh, so I've, I've if, just been informed. Oh, you've just, I almost fainted because if Flecken got, well, if Flecken got one penalty save from Jimenez, that would be my absolute dream result uh, because Flecken is so low owned around me. He's like, a, he's got a little dice on live FPL next to his name. Um, Brian and Bomo's around my rank. Well, around your rank as well. He's 68% owned. So I get a third of Bomo's points as well. I, I just assumed he was like 100. Every team I've looked, I've, I've yet to see a team without him. But apparently there are around me a third of teams without him. Yeah, I was very surprised by the Brian and Bomo mm. effective ownership as well. Again, I was kind of going into tonight thinking, yeah. basically whatever Flecken does, it's, it's him up against Jimenez. Yeah. But we actually can gain from Bomo, which is good. Yeah, yeah which is good. And I, he does score so uh, very frequently. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the fixtures Um uh, we include game week 11 but game week 12 there's a bit of a fixture um, uh, change uh, and we're going up to game week 16 we're also going to look at some replacements for Calvert-Lewin um, now Mark has 1.5 in the bank um, which takes him up to 7.4 if he was to remove Calvert-Lewin so I've sort of stopped around the 7 around that mark as well so um, obviously if you've got the money Solanke is a definite option um, but in this particular case, Mark hasn't. So if you're looking at that going, what about Sankey? Well, yeah, he's he's just more um, that. And then we're going to obviously look at uh, Mark's team for game week 11 and sort of round that, round it up. So let's have a look at the fixtures first. So I've got the fixtures on the screen. This is game week 11 through to 16. Um, and they show there is a bit of a fixture turn in game week 12, but some of those teams are already starting their good run of fixtures. Wolves are top. Southampton at home, brilliant. Fulham away, Bournemouth away. Uh, sorry, Bournemouth at home, Everton away, West Ham away. Ipswich at home, great run. Uh, and that continues beyond this. Bournemouth, they've gone up to seconds. They've got the City game out. They've got the easy City game out of the way. Now they've got Brentford away. Brentford always concede. Uh, Brighton, uh, defence isn't that great, but OK. Uh, Wolves away, their defence is awful. Uh, Tottenham at home, Ipswich and West Ham. So Bournemouth, wow. They, they're so maybe maybe I picked the wrong time to give up Semenyo, um, to paraphrase Airplane Two. Uh, Ipswich, uh, have got Tottenham, uh, at home, uh, away. Then Manchester United, Nottingham Forest, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, and Wolves. Arsenal are looking better once they get Chelsea out of the way. They got Nottingham Forest, West Ham, Manchester United, Fulham, and Everton. 
Brentford's good run continues. They do have Villa and Chelsea in 14-16, but it's still pretty good fixtures all around that, uh, starting with Bournemouth in game week 11. Uh, further down, Southampton rock bottom. Uh, it's, it's almost pointless reading out their, their fixtures because they're all always tough for them. Uh, Fulham, they move down. Crystal Palace Wolves, but they then have Tottenham, Brighton, Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, so they're sort of tougher games. Nottingham Forest fixtures stiffen a bit. But that's mainly because of the game week 12, Arsenal, game week 14, Man City. Chris Wood owners like me will perhaps need a contingency plan because I don't, I might, uh, do you know what? I think I might play Chris Wood then anyway, be cheeky. Um, and Everton, they dropped down. So we've been relying on Mikalenko and Calvert-Lewin, but it could be a kind of good time to leave. They do have West Ham away, but Brentford, Manchester United, Wolves, Liverpool and Arsenal in the next fixtures. Manchester United's fixtures got a nice little run. Leicester, Ipswich, Everton. Then Arsenal, Nottingham Forest, Man City. So game week 14 to 16, not good. Game week 11 to 13, right. Um, so yeah, you're looking at all of that. There's lots to take in. Um, lots of changes and certainly going to influence our sort of future transfers. But what, what, are you, what are your sort of immediate thoughts with this fixture plan over the next few? Yeah, I spent a lot of time looking at the Sky Fixture Ticker, have done for way too many years it you know dicta- it dictates everything i do mm. um so straight away i'm looking at wolves at the top so that's already started because Cunha came in last week i i could do something crazy that i've never done before i could get strand larson for calvert lewin and i would have somehow have three wolves forwards with chiomi yeah <laughs> uh, just for the just for the screenshots alone would be yeah. it might be worth might be worth doing um but yeah, eight Nuri, obviously. Mm. Uh, I really like him as an option as well, despite the four yellows. Mm. You know, I'd happily just go there. Bournemouth, good to see them near the top of the ticker again because it's it's been quite a few weeks since I had Semenyo and he just continues to impress, um, continues to, you know, put up good numbers mm. regardless of who he plays. So Brennan Johnson's great this week for me and Semenyo's probably winning the race at the moment for a game week 12 replacement for mm. Brennan Johnson. Okay. Again, I think it looks makes sense on the, on the fixture ticker and... Arsenal is is a big one for me as well. I've got Saka, I've got Gabriel, but one of the factors for selling Erling Haaland was to free up money to do things like Fleck into David Raya mm. around game week 12. So I need to be careful with what I spend on a Calvert-Lewin replacement because I'm going to want to do uh, David Raya game week 12 or game week 13 probably. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I'm, I've kind of earmarked him. I need to keep a million quid aside for, for that. Yeah, I mean, I've got a slightly different setup because I've got Havertz. Havertz and Alexander-Arnold are my expensive players um, that I'm looking, that can be moved on. They're my cash cows. But one thing that was evident in the moves that you and I did, and many other people did it as well, those are two free transfers or even for a hit, removed Haaland and got Salah in. Um, And one of the reasons I did that is, I think I I did a post on it on Sunday, often on X and social media on, on on Sunday mornings, I have a sort of a, a musing about fantasy football strategy. Um, my one, this one, was about analytic, analytics FC. So they've got a, a right kick in this season because they've been recommend. Well, Bruno Fernandes scored, but they've been recommending him every week and those types of things. And they, I don't feel like the analytics have, um, have quite picked up on the human side of the game. They uh, look too much at fixtures, haven't... It's taken them a while to work out the form of certain emerging players. We've got a lot of new managers, so there's a lot to work out this season. And I don't believe the robots in charge of it have, have done it as quickly as the humans. Um, but one thing I do think they got right, so let's end up slagging them off. The, the thing I got think they've got right is that every pound, of every, every million in your team has got to be generated into points. And I'm looking at Haaland at 15.4. And I just think even a goal, I can live without that because, well, well, we'll have a list of cheap forwards, but others like Solanke, Isaac as well, uh, Havertz when the fixtures change. There's a lot of players, a third of the price, half the price that are performing well. Meanwhile, that money can be invested in Salah, who's getting bonus every time he scores. That didn't happen last season. Um, Palmer did blank, but... You know, he's still got a bonus. Saka, his first ever blank this season. And I'm including the time he did get a bonus uh, in the Leicester game, I think it was. Um, so it's his first blank in, what, 10 matches. So I'm looking at that. And, and then so I'm looking at Alexander-Arnold and thinking, well, you're not value now. There's players, there's Guardiola's a million cheaper. He's scoring every other week. <laughs> 
Um, I'm looking at Havertz. Well, there's well, we'll come to this in a second. There's a whole bunch of players under under six million, seven under seven million, the cheaper. So, yeah, is that is that coming to your thinking at all? Has it changed how you think um, about things like analytics and about how about value in a team and doing maverick moves? Because to be honest, you and I, we're not mavericks, but we just moved to Ireland ahead of Bournemouth. I mean, we're mavericks now. Yeah, it's not. Um... It's not really in our FPL DNA to mm. to remove a Haaland before a fixture like that. I'm still laughing because you called, I think you just called Guardiol, uh, Guardiola, which I absolutely well, love. Did I? So I think that, <laughs> that could be that could definitely stick. Well, he um, is, especially he's... with it, especially the way he's playing. Yeah, it's yeah. six goals and eight or something ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, something maybe I mean, away fixture. I, I said scoring every other game. It's more. It's more. He's practically scoring every game. Crazy. Yeah. On analytics, FC. I mean, I've I'm like you. I'm kind of old school. I test, um, like make my own decisions. But I'm I'm always. I think it's dangerous as well not to keep an eye on what's happening oh, yeah. and stuff. And I mm. keep an eye on on FPL review and see what people. I, I like to know what I'm up against mm. a lot of the time. And I, I like the challenge of kind of taking it on in many ways. Mm. Uh, maybe they didn't get things right with like you know Bruno this season and Eze and stuff at the start. But I do very clearly remember looking at it at the start of the season and they were very quick to suggest cheap forwards. I think it was yeah. Alan plus two cheap forwards. Chris mm. Wood was there, maybe a couple of others. So um, there's obviously pros and cons to everything. But yeah, it's it feels like this season with cheap strikers, it feels like for maybe four, five, six seasons, we didn't really have reliable ones. Mm. I mean, you've been playing this game for a long yeah. time, and I'm sure a lot of viewers have as well. That, you know, it goes back to, you know, we had Charlie Austin's in the days. Uh, oh, Amor yeah. Zaki comes to mind. There's so many, you know, and they, those were your cheap guys at, at maybe bottom 10 teams who maybe took penalties. It's very easy for them to be good value. They don't have to do much. Mm. Uh, and we're seeing it again, you know, Chris Wood, Cunha, mm. they very often get the bonus, bonus yeah. points as well. And it's probably even more so now since yeah. the little tweaks to the bonus point system. So, that's that was why I felt I didn't mind losing um, Haaland. Mm. I've I've ended up on extremely cheap cheap forwards now. Calvert Lewin, Cunha, and a four five, which at the start of the season I was saying no no chance that's going to happen. But it just comes down to value. Mm. Um, yeah. And a very simple way of looking at it is you know a six million forward. How how often is he going to get me a six pointer? Or you know fifteen million Haaland. How often is he going to get me a fifteen pointer? You can kind of do mm. some you know more simplistic stuff for. Yeah. People like me who are not as mathematical as the the analytics guys, and um, and just yeah, you got to play the season that's in front of you. And at the moment, we've got a wide range of really good cheap forwards yeah. and loads of good premium midfielders yeah. who are more reliable. Yeah. And we don't have strikers at nine, ten, eleven million. Yeah, we've got Watkins, but there's a big gap between Haaland and the others. So yeah, it's a, it just makes sense at the moment. I think to have to have a couple of the cheaper guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm at the stage where I've, I mean, I've got Cunha Wood. Chris Wood and Havertz, and I'm still undecided whether I want to go three. So I do. I have got Havertz to Welbeck in game week twelve in mind, but I'm unsure about perhaps having Havertz moving to one of these other sort of slightly more expensive strikers that we're not going to discuss in the next bit section. But Isaac in particular is scoring a lot now. Not uh, Newcastle do not have those midweek European games. And I'm looking at the fixtures here. Nottingham Forest away. I don't like that in game week 11. West Ham at home. I do like that. <laughs> um, Crystal Palace away. Good again. Liverpool at home. Never know. Brentford away. Brilliant. Leicester at, ho uh, at home. So there's a good run there. So I'm thinking Havertz to Isaac as well. So I'm, I'm a bit undecided about going fully cheap, but sort of a little bit cheap. Sort of cheaper Dino, <laughs> if that's the thing. I like... I like that idea now because I think what you're seeing is a lot of people have moved to maybe mm. three premium yeah. mids, maybe still have Trent, Gabriel, mm. David Ryan's in a lot of teams. So you can. Sp I'm a good example because I'm I'm already a little bit snookered now because Calvert Lewin I can't get the Solanke who's the obvious replacement mm. because I've got the expensive mids, I've got Trent, Gabriel, and and I want to get Raya. So yeah. funds are a little bit tight for me, even though even though Haaland's gone. So with we know how quickly this game changes. The cheap forwards have been really, really good. Mm. But now there's an opportunity, I think, for people who can get to the Isaks of this world, maybe even still Ollie mm. Watkins. Solanke's certainly back on the radar. And it's funny how, th how quickly things change yeah. in FPL. We're all bidding him off or people are bidding him off and now he's essential for Ipswich. So if you can, I think it makes sense to remain flexible with an 8 million-ish forward. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think I could end up regretting that a couple of weeks down the line. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at game game week 12, so I'm sackerless. Uh, Arsenal um, face Nottingham Forest. I don't actually think that's a good as good a fixture as I perhaps thought it was at the beginning of the season. Since game week 13 away to West Ham, I'm starting to think Saka now. So I'm thinking I could just remove Havertz uh, in game week 12 and just look at Saka uh, another day. But yeah, Saka's the... Definitely the one. I mean, I think I think the way my team is looking is in a roundabout way will we'll start to look a bit more like yours, as in I'll have Saka, Palmer, Salah and, yeah. and, and some other blokes. <laughs> so that's my core three. And then the other blokes are just a revolving bunch of other blokes. Yeah, and it's good. I mean, at that fixture ticker, Brentford are still pretty high. So yeah. I think Mbumo is yeah. it's, it's four. It's four midfielders mm. and some other blokes. I, I just... And Bumo is very likely yeah. to be a season keeper for for anyone who currently has him, you know. So he's uh, again, he's he's a reliable captain in home games as well. Yeah. Um, okay, let's have a look at some uh, replacements for Calvert Lewin. So this is quite specific for you. Just oh, just give me anyone. Yeah, anyone. <laughs> yeah. So they, well, there's the thing is, there's so many. There's so many. I sort of stopped, um, but I could have added more. Um, so this is. Uh, Calvert Lewin replacements under seven point four million, and I put their last four game week stats. Um, so I'll just go down the list here. And to be honest, I'm looking at them all. I don't think I would mind any of them next few fixtures, and that and that includes some some eye eyebrow raising names as well. So his first name is Visser uh, for Brentford. Uh, was injured, has come back, so he's only had one start. But his minutes per expected goal involvement is uh, at least a goal involvement to start eighty two minutes. Two goals, basically, that's why. Um, so a, a slight anomaly, but he was posting these sorts of stats before he was injured. Um, he's six million. You can afford him. And he has Bournemouth at home, Everton away, Leicester at home, Aston Villa away, Newcastle at home, Chelsea uh, away. So for the next three, at least, uh, and Brian and Bomo Wissa double up looks really potent, I think. Looks really good. Um, problem is, I don't have just one Brentford goalkeeper. I've got two, so I can't oh, get. No. I can't get Wissa again. I'm oh. I've talked about snooker snooker a lot in this episode, but I'm 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 like I'm like oh. Jimmy White. I'm, oh. I'm I'm snookered all over the place here. Oh my god, the flag always rings twice. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, so I can't I can't get to Wissa until David Raya replaces Flecken, and I I had a lot of questions last week. Um, People ask me, you know, who, who's the best striker? Is it Wood? Is it Cunha? Is it Wissa? And I said to a lot of people last week, if I didn't already have triple Brentford, I think there's a very good chance I would have went in Wissa over Cunha. Uh, I just, I really like the fixtures. Mm. I like the role he plays. Yeah. I feel like having Mbumo and Wissa is a lot more yes. powerful, obviously, than having just Mbumo because yeah. his ownership is high. So Wissa, I really, really like. And again, we're recording before the Brentford game Monday mm. night. I expect... Nothing less than, you know, a minimum of five points from, from Wissa okay. in that Fulham fixture. So if he delivers again in that one, those who can get to him, really good option. Yeah, I think now is Wissa time. Bournemouth at home, Everton away, Leicester at home. By the time you get to game week 14, you've got Aston Villa away, Newcastle at home, Chelsea away, and it doesn't look quite so good. And also, when if, you, if you're making the move in game week 13, yeah, you've got Leicester at home, but then you've got those other fixtures. So I think... Now is Wissa time. And I think you and I, if we were thinking of getting Wissa in, if I didn't do it this week, which I'm, I'm not planning to, but if I didn't this week, I don't think I will. Yeah, the, I think the ship's just about to sail and mm. I think I'm going to miss going to miss the boat on this one. Yeah. Um, next name is Jimenez, um, 5.8. Um, I think the Jimenez time was a little while ago because he's, his good fixtures are back to draw to an end. But nevertheless, his stats are minutes per expected goal moment every 95 minutes. Uh, he started three times, uh, chances created six. So he's creating chances as well as his three shots on target. He's got uh, a goal and an assist. So two attacking returns in his last four, which is good. Um, he is obviously playing tonight. So by the time you watch, I don't know what time this is going to go out, but by the time you watch this, he, you may have discovered that he's got a hat trick or been injured or whatever. But Fulham, Crystal Palace away, game week 11. Wolves at home, great. Tottenham away. Actually, that's not too bad. Then Brighton at home. Do you know what? Fulham have got a really good record against Brighton, so I wouldn't put it past him to do well. Then you've got Arsenal and Liverpool, so then it gets tough. So it, you're sort of starting to draw to the end of Jimenez's time, I think. Yeah, I think 
if you're going to get on him, it's got to be soon. And, mm. and again, I think he's a really good option, and he'll probably you know prove that again on Monday night. I expect points from him as well. The the fixtures next four, I, I think you can you can still go there. Crystal Palace, yeah, Wills, yeah. Tot, Tottenham don't keep clean sheets. Brighton is is fine, mm-hmm. but with every game week that goes by, we're getting closer to the the Arsenal, Liverpool back to back fixtures. Yeah. Now there is a lot of managers out there that are on a front eight or like me would like to get to a front eight in mm. the near future. Um, you know, I would like my four five striker to become probably a cheaper forward like mm. a like a Joe Pedro or a Raul Jimenez. Yeah. So if you can bench him in game week fifteen and sixteen, mm. then he could be just a good long term option. Yeah. So uh, yeah, great to see him scoring scoring goals again. And I, I really you know, Muniz is a is a good striker, but the way Jimenez is playing, he's he's not really a threat at the moment. Um yeah, next name is, is Jamie Vardy. Um I, I'll never get him. Um, I know other people look at Chris Wood and go, oh, I'm, I'm just never, ever going to get him. But I just know I'm not going to get Jamie Vardy because there's so many other good options. But he is scoring. So, he, I mean, Leicester, no matter who they play, I think Vardy will score. Maybe they'll get beat 5-0, but they won't get beat. They'll get beat 5-1 and Vardy will pop up. Um, Manchester United at home isn't that bad. Chelsea <coughs> away. Um, sorry, che- sorry, Manchester United away. Chelsea at home. Remember, they still have Robert Sanchez and goal. Uh, Brentford uh, away. They they always concede. West Ham at home. Terrible defence. Brighton at home can easily score against them. And Newcastle away. Um, yeah, he's scored against them before. Um, yeah, I'm just yeah. It's like people. Some people's Chris Wood. They just like him. They know he scores, but they're just never going to get him. Yeah, I, I feel exactly the same. It's it's a funny one. I, I can safely say as well, I'll probably never own him ever again. <laughs> no. But it could be that, you know, I always think when I do my season review after Game Week 38, one of my learnings will be if you've got a proven Premier League goal scorer at 5.7 million who takes penalties, yeah. he's probably going to be good value at times yeah. and he's only 5.7. Yeah. But again, the fixtures, looking at them, I think they're totally fine for a Jamie mm. Vardy. Mm. But... I think I think it is just because there's so many others. Yeah. If if there wasn't so many others like Cunha's and Chris Woods, then he probably would be in more teams. But uh, yeah, if he could if he could not do too much damage, that would be that would be appreciated. Uh, next name is Danny Welbeck. He's if I if I if I want to go three cheap forwards, got Cunha, got Chris Wood already, then it's Danny Welbeck, and he's the one I ought to go for being a Brighton fan as well. They do have Man City at home. I do don't put it past him to score against them. But he's, then he's got Bournemouth away, Southampton at home, Fulham away, Leicester away, Crystal Palace at home. I mean, out of all of them, I would actually say the Fulham game is probably the toughest. And I include the Man City game in that. Um, he's be the one I would go for if I, but I can't, I don't want to lock myself out of Isaac or Havertz again or Solanke. So my 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 dullard nature may prevent me getting him but i do recommend him highly he's something like fourth score best scoring forward um minutes per expected goal every 132 minutes he has three goals and an assist four attacking returns in four starts um and he has had five shots on target um he is absolutely brilliant um he's just it's just, it's absolutely remarkable this injury prone almost journeyman around the top teams has emerged as I think an absolute hero at Brighton. He will always be remembered. Yeah. He's been, he's been one of the most impressive performers in the Premier League this season without doubt. He's been really, really good every time I've watched him getting the goals, just looks like Danny Welbeck of old. Um, But again, I'm just thinking about all these players, Welbeck, Vardy, Chris Wood. None of them have been in my team. And there's probably a good chance none of them will be. And it's, I think it's definitely a downside of playing FPL for a very long time because there's definitely previous yeah. experience bias involved here or whatever the name for it is. I've had probably loads of negative experiences with these guys. Welbeck's always been injury prone. Vardy, in my mind, is is, is past his best. Chris Wood, I, I think I need to shake that off and just probably get him soon. But yeah. he's, he's in the same category. He's been at loads of different teams. But he's, he's just having such a good season. But on Brighton and on Welbeck, those fixtures look good after Man City. I was talking about my eighth attacker being useless to me because he's only 4-5 and he doesn't play. Mm. Uh, going into the December period, I want eight attackers that I can actually rely on. And I, I think for my scenario, I would rather spend 0.5 less on Joe Pedro when he's back mm-hmm. if it's going to be yeah. a rotation, you know, seventh and eighth player a lot of weeks. Welbeck's great. 
But if I can use that 0 0.5 elsewhere and get a penalty taker in, then that's probably what I'll do instead. So I'm just going to wait for, for Pedro yeah. to come back rather than going for, for Welbeck. Yeah, I mean, that would also be my other instinct about Pedro being back. Obviously, we'd prefer a cheaper penalty taker, who is good as well. But I don't know. This season, too many injuries for Pedro. And you don't, suddenly he's like, oh, no, he's, he's a bit of a doubt. And then he's out for a month. Uh, and that's happened twice now in terms of uh, his injuries. Whereas Welbeck just keeps playing. Um, yeah, we do have to sort of suspend our, um, our, our emotions about teams. And this is where the analytics has got it. So they probably th look, have looked at Nottingham Forest as an easy fixture. Their defence is good. Their attack is good. They're, what are they, third, fourth in the league? Or they certainly were over I think the they might be third, possibly. Third. Um, and so you've got to look at the whole team. And if the whole team is gelling and working well, then the guy up front has got to be the one to get in. And it would be the same if Man City were gelling and have they, as they have done over the years with Rodri there and De Bruyne feeding Haaland, the whole team is geared towards Haaland scoring. But when it's not, then, you know, the, the he's not a player to recommend. Whereas Chris Wood is arguably, but yeah. So Chris Woods uh, is next up after Welbeck, um, 144 minutes uh, per expected goal involvement. He's got five goals in his last four starts. He's more than a goal a game player. That won't last, but I, I'll take more than a goal every other game for him. That's why I gen genuinely expect from him, and I'd be very happy with. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean that time is ending now. But every everyone thinks Chris Woods brilliant now, don't they? Yeah, I mean, if you don't, <laughs> you need to just. I don't know, have a word with yourself. He's, mm. it, it happened to me again at the weekend, and I'm sure I'm not the only person. When you don't own Chris Wood, and I was out and about on Saturday, and I, I just checked the scores at halftime and full-time when I'm, when I'm out with the family, and I checked the Forest score. I seen they had two goals, and I just knew at least one of them was going to be Chris Wood. Yeah. Uh, and I was just hoping he didn't get the assist for the second one. Mm. So I, I'm looking at the fixture ticker. Doesn't look like a great time to buy Chris Wood, but I also think it's probably just a no-brainer. You know, he's he's so consistent. Forrest are absolutely flying this year. Everything is designed to funnel the chances to Chris Wood. Yeah. Takes penalties. Newcastle at home is fine. They haven't been good this year. Arsenal haven't been keeping too many clean sheets recently. Ipswich at home is fantastic. City likewise, a lot of players missing. So you can kind of, you can spin the narrative either way. You can say those fixtures are tricky. They're near the bottom of the ticker. Or you can build an article for yourself that Chris Wood is one of the best FPL picks in the game. Yeah. And regardless of fixture, he should be in all of our teams. So he's definitely he's definitely in my thoughts, regardless of fixtures. Yeah, I mean, I look at some of those harder games. Arsenal away. I can see him scoring there. Uh, but it's all about whether Gabriel and Saliba can stop him at set piece. So it's, you've got two of, the, two of the, the, the best sorts of players there. Chris Wood is absolutely brilliant at set pieces. Um, heading the ball into the net. That's what he does. Um, Gabriel and Saliba are, are, are a really good aerial threat as well. They should be able to defend him. But yeah, so it's like, who's going to win that battle? I think that would be really interesting. Uh, Man City as well, actually, I think he could easily score there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I will get some bench points from him. But yeah, it's at Newcastle, Newcastle at home, former team. Um, and then Ipswich at home, game week 13. It's just... I mean, they look really good. It's game week 13. That's what. That's when the non-Chris Wood owners are going to really get scared, I think. Yeah. So you, are you just going to plan to keep them long-term, do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no I mean, no reason to sell. Until someone tells me a reason why Chris Wood is is sellable, I will not sell him. Um, yeah, he could be He could be there all season. He could be there all season. Um, I suspect the only time he'll remove him are if, if there was a dramatic drop-off in form. Um, of, of the team and or he gets injured and I suspect it might be the latter um, because no 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 player you know survives every every game week you know injury free um, but yeah he's good uh, I put Calvin Lewin in here obviously you're not going to get him in because you want to get him out but just as a comparison he's 5.9 minutes per expected goal involvement every 180 minutes and no assists and no goals or one chance created five shots on target so he's getting shots on target. They're just not of a quality um, and he's not being very creative. It's just, it's it's just, um, yeah, it's not working out. Beto comes on in the last 10 minutes and scores. Calvin. Yeah, that's, I think that's the second time Beto's done that. So there's, it could happen in any given week that mm. Beto was pushing, pushing hard for a start or, or mm. Calvert-Loon's minutes significantly <laughs> drop, you know, it could be a 65, 70 minute mm. substitution. So 
there's absolutely no reason to keep him now. It was, you know, I don't we wouldn't have to keep him for Southampton, but I think it made sense mm-hmm. if you were prioritizing other moves like Salah and yeah. Cunha and stuff. But yeah, his he's surely going to be the most transferred out player this week. Yeah. Uh, Cunha's next. Uh, both got him in. 6.6 gone up now. Minutes per expected goal involvement every 185 minutes. Um, just the one assist, despite the nine chances created. So I suspect he's going to be on the assist imminent table that I do with Mark Joblin each week on our podcast. Um, but he has had two goals. Minutes per baseline bonus, absolute monster. It says 5.2 here, but I might as well just write in absolute monster because it's way more than it's way better than anyone else so chris wood for example minutes per baseline bonus every 10 minutes kuna every five minutes three shots on target um strand larson got the goal kuna got the assist last time kuna strand larson is 5.6 uh three chances created three goals six shots on target um, it's my baseline bonus every 8.5 minutes so um I mean, the obvious thing there is if you've got i mean Kuna, we think is on penalties, maybe. Uh, certainly in the running, is, is I th- I think he's worth getting. That's why I got him instead of Strand Larson. But they're both good, and as you said, you could have a Wolves triple up in the tack. Yeah, and it's um, first of all, Kuna, I, I I love a I love a forward in FPL who offers you more than just goals. Oh, You've got yeah. chances created, and and the bonus is he's very clearly very <laughs> good for the bonus this season as well because he's so involved. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I've been thinking quite a bit about the, you know, the Wolves triple up and attack. Obviously, it's tongue in cheek, but mm. Chiwomi is a, is a dead option anyway, so it, he doesn't matter. But I don't think I should avoid Strand Larson just because I have Cunha. If mm. I if I look through this list of players, I can't get Wissa. I'm going to wait for Joe Pedro instead of Welbeck. Calvert Lewin's obviously going to go. If I kind of rule out a few of these guys and, and if it if it's left over that I think Strand Larson is the best of the rest then why not go for both mm. um you know it's not going to be a long term thing but Strand Larson in his own right is a really good FPL option this season and yeah. you know of course they can obviously both of them can't score but they can they can certainly assist each other of course so yeah he's it's it, it would I think I don't think I've done it too many times I remember having uh, I think everyone remembers having Josh King and Emmanuel Dennis in their front lines from, from Watford. <laughs> yeah. Can't remember having two strikers from the same team. Uh, certainly teams maybe, you know, not in the top four or five. So he's, he's Strand Larson, definitely in my thoughts as well. Yeah, definitely. I think the I think Josh King was at the same time as Callum Wilson. Um, and that, I may have had that double up. I may have had that double up for, for a period. Um, Over a month. But apart from, and even when Suarez and Sturridge, I did have that double up a lot. But I think Suarez was a bit... midfielder, though. Suarez and uh, Suarez and Sturridge is a bit different to King and King and Dennis, oh, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, that's the that's the top that's the top whack that is. Um, okay, next player is a player I think you should go for because you're a Manchester United fan. Um, Van Nistelrooy is in for um, the next two games. So Manchester United they've got good fixtures. So I'm just looking where they are on the. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, they've got Leicester at home, Ipswich away. Brilliant. Two promoted sides. And then new manager comes in straight away, Everton at home. New manager bounce, new new manager bounce. And then they got Arsenal away, Nottingham Forest at home, Man City. So it drops off a bit. But it's this period of the next three. You can get Hoyland in. He is obviously going to play. The new manager plays a 3-4-3. He has to play Hoyland there. I don't know who else he will play in a 3-4-3, who's going to be the, the top of that. Um, but his minutes per expected goal involvement, not that strong. Every 286 minutes, a big drop-off there from Larson. But created four chances, has scored, has got an assist, he's getting returns, um, and he started. I don't know. If it was my team, I'd, I would be really tempted to get Hoyland in for these two promoted sides and then Everton at home for a bonus. Yeah, I think... Um... I always, I've always fallen into the the trap as a as a Manchester United FPL <laughs> manager. I've been falling on the pessimistic side mm. more so than the optimistic side. But I'm also a fixtures manager, mm. and like you said, Leicester, Ipswich, Everton. It doesn't get much better than that. So, I I do think Manchester United attackers in particular are the best differentials for the next three game weeks. Now the question is, do I want to spend six point nine? Because that that's the issue. Because it has a knock on effect. Mm. If I want to get David Raya, for example, uh, 
I'm probably I'm probably eating up too much budget. But what I what I could do is I could go Calvert Lewin to Hoyland. Then in game week twelve, it would be Brennan Johnson to Semenyo, which would again free up cash, and then Raya could wait till game week thirteen. So mm. there's there's always different ways around this. Okay. Um, so I'm glad you brought up Hoyland because he wasn't really in my thoughts too much. Um, you've reminded me how good the fixtures are. Mm. So yeah, maybe, maybe, just maybe that may, might be better than having having three wolves forwards. Uh, final name uh, Evan Ilson. Uh, so if you don't go for Semenyo, um, Evan Ilson. So I might go back to Semenyo. Um, but Evan Nielsen, I think, is a good option at 5.9. Minutes per expected goal involvement, not as strong, three every 310 minutes. Um, so you would hope that would get better. But they have had tough fixtures. Um, but he scored a couple of goals, got an assist in the last four. So three attacking returns for 5.9 in the last four game weeks is really strong. Three shots on target. Um, he was bench one of the fixtures, but um, I don't get the impression that he's not seen as a, a, a the main man there up front. Um, but they do have lots of attacking options. But yeah, he's in the mix, definitely. And their good fixtures start now. Yeah, it's um again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried about the benching. I think that did scare a lot of people off, probably myself included, for a week or two, but but he's 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 back in my thoughts now as well. The thing about I think about Bournemouth is they've been fantastic. I think there's a very, very good chance I'll go back to Semenyo. I just think he's clearly the best FPL pick. And do I want to end up with Semenyo and even Nielsen, I'm not so sure. I'm a bit reluctant to double up on their attack, even yeah. though they have been good. So I'd probably swear of even Nielsen and just be a bit patient and then and then get Semenyo for Johnson possibly later. Okay. Um, uh, let's have a look at your team uh, as it stands at the moment. I've got a picture of Calvert-Lewin. Uh, apologies for the uh, old uh, picture of Calvert-Lewin. I've got no, he's not that old. He's not that young, I know, here, but uh, I think it's from a year or two ago because um, uh, you want to get rid of him. Um, so Thankfully, I'm, I'm just glad I can't see him from no, I, I know that's fine. I've, I've still got to look at him, but I know he's not in my team, so I don't, I don't have to, I don't have that pain. Um, so do you want to run through your team and sort of what you're thinking, whether you might hold, whether Calvert will go, what, what, what's, what, what's up with your team? Yeah. So, um, early days, it's only Monday, but early thoughts, 1.5 in the bank. Calvert Lewin is there. He's the weak link. So, Flecken is fine at home to Bournemouth. I've got Trent, Gabriel, and Rico Lewis. Hopefully, Lewis comes back in and starts. Very frustrating that Walker came back because Pep, you know, quite clearly said he wasn't expecting him back. But hey, that's Pep. Johnson at home to Ipswich. Hopefully, will be a fruitful performance. Currently, have the captain's armband on Mbumo, which I'll talk about in a second. Saka, Salah, Palmer, Cunha at home to Southampton, which again, hopefully, is great. And Calvert Lewin away to West Ham. So, one point five. I. I think I'm more confused about where I'm going to go with 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 my with my replacement now. Having gone through them options, you've you've thrown Hoyland into the mix. I'm definitely open to Strand Larson to go double Wolves forwards. Chris Woods, I still might go for just regardless of fixtures. Mm. But again, that might come down to budget and I might go cheaper. And and Raul Jimenez is certainly still in my thinking as well. So, I, as as odd as it might sound, I think Strand Larson actually is 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 probably just about winning the race. No. Uh, but again, there's a long way to go until Friday night, Saturday morning. So, just on, just on Mbumo as well, captain's armband. Mm. If I read through, Brian Mbumo at home mm. this season, starting in game week one, nine points, fourteen points. Then it was nine points against West Ham, eight against Wolves, fifteen against Ipswich. He is very, okay. very reliable at home. Mm. So I think there's a very strong case to go captain Bumo against Bournemouth now I brought in Salah last week with the intention of probably captaining him for the next two that I own him for and I probably will end up on Salah at home to Aston Villa but yeah people people need to take Mbumo seriously when he plays at home for for captaincy because he's been doing it all season and I'm sure elsewhere like you know people who own Tottenham like the Solanke and Son very good captaincy options there against Ipswich as well I don't think I would captain Johnson over Mbumo or Salah but it's good to have another option there yeah I'm one of the benefits of not having Haaland is if you've got Haaland you've got that money you think I've got a captain him um you know he's got I mean he, he was 130 percent effective ownership around me in the rankings at the time uh this week um he's 15.4 million or well, 50.3 million sorry at the moment he's just gone down in price um but you look at that and so many times <clears throat> I have not captained the likes of Brian and Bomo uh or 
Saka or Palmer. I've only had Palmer for a couple of weeks because I've gone for uh, Haaland. But not having him in my team is quite liberating because you can, you can genuinely think. So, yeah, I mean, I think in my team as well, it will be a genuine thing. Salah or on Bo- and Bomo, one of them will get the armband. And I can decide that. I haven't got that heavy weight of fifteen million pounds worth of player with an okay fixture at home to, uh, away to Brighton. Um, so yeah, I'm, we could even throw we could even throw Cunha into the captain oh, conversation yeah, at home to Southampton. I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking Cunha at home to Southampton. That's I mean he's I mean it's it's just, it's just the sheer haul potential of Brian and Bomo. Um, and I know Bournemouth are particularly strong at home, um, and they're pretty good sides even away. But I do think, yeah, I think that's right. But you've got Johnson there, Ipswich. And if it, those with Solanke, I'd be thinking, and even Son, if you think he's going to get more than that 55, 60 minutes. But one of those Spurs assets at home to Ipswich, I mean, they're scoring a hatful at home. And Ipswich are conceding a hatful away. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah, I think I think I like Son and Solanke more mm. for captaincy than I do Johnson. Yeah. Um, I'm just happy to own Johnson. I don't think I go that far. Yeah. For me, when it comes to captaincy, I like set pieces and penalties. Yeah. So Salah, Bumo, Cunha, yeah. kind of tick all of those boxes. But yeah, it's a real choice this week um, as well. So good luck uh, with your decisions, uh, whoever whoever you replace Calvert Lewin with. Um, and I'll be back uh, my own video, uh, my own team reveal, also Tom Freeman's team reveal. I'm going to be doing and the Goals Imminent podcast. Um, later in the week as well and there's plenty more videos and podcasts coming up all through the week uh, to set you up for the deadline Um, good luck with your decisions Mark good luck with the game week take care see you soon cheers all